I'm confused about what happened yesterday with the uh, killing of the For the People Act. The reason I'm confused is because I had the impression uh, from what Barack Obama said before the vote was taken and the For the People Act was destroyed. What Obama said about he supported what Joe Manchin had come up with. And what Manchin had come up with was a compromise uh, that Manchin, I guess, thought would attract some Republican voters. And I would think <laughs> that, that, if, that if anybody in the political realm in the United States would understand that Republicans are not going to cooperate on any level, it would have been Barack Obama. I mean, he had eight years of dealing with these monsters. And um, the, the signature piece of legislation that he did get passed, the Affordable Care Act, was challenged how many times? 50, 60, three times the Supreme Court, yada, 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 just on and on and on. But for some reason, um, Obama thought that Joe Manchin's plan was a good one. His counter offered to the United States Senate to pass the For the People Act. I, I don't understand how anyone in American politics today could could think that, especially not Barack Obama, who dealt for eight years with these uh, swine. Um, Manchin's idea or his compromise plan to me was a real cop out. I just honestly felt that. And I felt that because I think the people who would be most affected by what the Republicans are trying to do, were against what Manchin offered as a countermeasure. And realizing that there are people very, very much, uh, um, uh, very, uh, a great deal smarter than I am and, and more informed about these bills that are designed to try to preserve democracy, I decided to side with the people who were against what Manchin was saying and for the original For the People Act, Senate Bill 1, I, I believe it is what it was called. And I still feel that way. I mean, I do not have a problem in this existential struggle to preserve democracy in this country or kill it, which is what the Christian fascists are trying to do. I don't have a problem in siding completely, 100%, with the people who, in my opinion, are trying to preserve democracy. So, getting very, very confused through all this, and, and I think this is the reason a lot of people um, just walk away from some of these issues, because it does get extremely confusing. You know, what am I voting? What am I supporting? Who, what, 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 what does the bill contain that I'm not aware of? I'm talking about for the People, people Act. Um, should I try to investigate even further? Should I go with the people uh, whom I trust to make these sorts of decisions? And for the longest period of time, that was my attitude where concerned liberals in Congress until I started to realize, oh, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 years ago that the liberals in Congress, the traditional liberals, were part of the problem. And we're making the situation even worse. And I think that idea with me came from the influence of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Especially his speech, if you want to call it that, at Riverside Church in uh, a few months before he was assassinated. That was a speech that he declared the United States is the greatest purveyor of violence on the planet. But anyway, getting back to what happened yesterday, I don't understand why it came as a surprise, if it was a surprise, to the Democratic Party leadership in this country, the, the Senate and, and the House. Um, 
there was no chance, not, not even the slimmest, slightest chance, that this was going to, uh, to pass. There was even argument as to whether or not it would get 50 Democratic votes, which it did get, but that wasn't enough, was it? So, for so many Democrats and, and, and these voting rights groups that um, are trying their damnedest in the United States to preserve democracy, the failure yesterday, the failure to advance the Democratic Party's elections bill, it felt like the arrival of the inevitable, it did to me, uh, Sort of like the, uh, as Nick Corisani put it, uh, Corisaniti put it at the uh, New York Times, quote, the final thud of a tree crashing in the woods after wavering for months and everyone heard it, <laughs> end quote. Right. A takeoff, I guess, from that old saw about if a tree crashes in the forest and there's nobody around to hear it, doesn't make a noise. Yada, yada, yada. But... The Democrats were unable to halt this endless push by Republican state legislatures to, to, to pass a whole bunch of voting restrictions to eliminate people. Those restrictions are designed specifically, let's not mince words, to eliminate people who will not vote the way the, Christi the white Christian fascists, well, that's redundant, but the Christian fascists, how the Christian fascists want them to vote. That's what these bills are designed to do. Eliminate people of color. Eliminate people who are physically challenged. Eliminate students. Eliminate uh, old people. Eliminate everybody except Christian fascists. That's what these bills in the various state legislatures are, are designed to do. And I think we can all agree with that. Well, <laughs> obviously not all of us. But... Um, because of the push in the state legislatures by these Republicans, Democrats had hoped that this, this attempt to enact a federal voting law would undo much of the Christian fascist legislation that's already been passed. I think about 14 states have already passed this crap. And this SB1 would have expanded access to voting for millions of people around the country. And, and this is a part to me that is at once infuriating and, and very, very sad because I, I never would have thought in a million years that I would be alive to see the end of democracy in this country. I really didn't. I knew that democracy had been challenged over and over and over again throughout uh, recent history, say in the past, oh, I don't know, 60 years, over and over and over again, democracy has been challenged. And not always by the flying monkey right. Uh, a lot of Democrats, so-called, were willing to join forces re with Republicans or act on their own to challenge democracy. But I never thought I would be around to see the death throes of democracy. I really didn't. In fact, I didn't think it would ever happen. Not only did I think I would not be around, but I never thought my kids, grandkids, or great-grandkids would see the end of democracy. Now, that's probably exceedingly naive on my part to have had that attitude, but that's what my attitude was. And yet, here I am. Here you are, watching democracy die. And I, the, the, there's no other way to put it. I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, to be uh, some kind of a canary in the, in the coal mine. Uh, I think anyone who has the ability to observe what's going on and to understand the impetus behind these moves in the various Republican legislatures is fully aware of what is really happening. The problem, as I see it, it's, it's like climate change. Nobody pays any attention to it. Not, not the overarching cause. Now, when I say nobody, I mean the vast majority of Americans. There is no concerted effort by people, not just Americans, but by people to confront an issue that ultimately, if left unchecked, will, there is no question, destroy us. Human life. Destroy it. 
And the political life in this country, I think, is facing the same existential crisis. But we're not going to pay attention because it's just it, it's too complicated. It's too complex. Uh, the powers are arrayed against us. The little people, the voters, is, is too much power. So we just tend to uh, whistle past the graveyard, I, I, I guess, to say, well, it's, it couldn't possibly happen. Well, the uh, thinkers who make these decisions about certain laws or bills being presented for a vote, they will never let democracy die. But again, what is being left out of, of that line of thinking, in, in my humble opinion, is the rise of Christian fascism. These people are not kidding. They are not kidding when they make it clear or it becomes clear that the Christian fascists, not just in this country, but around the planet, are determined to end democracy and replace it with Christian fascism. Period. End of message. That's it. So, Yesterday, as it became clear that, I mean, what was defeated yesterday was not a vote on SB1. It was a procedural vote to continue toward voting on SB1. It was a vote to decide whether or not there would be discussion on the Senate floor. <laughs> That's what was killed. But in the process of killing that, it killed the entire bill. Now, these laws in the Senate, I, I, I admit, I, have, I, I don't understand them. Uh, on the surface, they seem to be totally anti-democratic in and of themselves. I mean, when did it become okay for the Senate to vote to not even discuss a bill? When did it become okay for the Senate to vote not even to give a hearing to a Supreme Court nominee? When did all that happen? Or has it always been that way? See, this is what I mean. It, it just becomes so unwieldy, so, so complex, so confusing that most of us, myself included, are inclined to just say, well, to hell with it. You know, I mean, I, I can't, there's nothing I can do. I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm fighting against. And then when you have champions of voting rights like John Lewis or Stacey Abrams uh, or, or people who come along and really devote their lives to guaranteeing the right to vote, the right to choose our own leaders, and they don't get the kind of support that you would think that would warrant. I mean, John Lewis, Stacey Abrams, and, and there have been many, many more. I understand that. A lot of white people, too, who have tried desperately to preserve and enhance and solidify this idea, this radical idea here in the United States of America that, that people have a right to choose their own leaders and have a right to get rid of the ones they don't like, that, that, that is a radical idea. It, it is counter to just about every form of, of governance in the history of the human race, this idea of democracy, let the people decide. But when you have people like John Lewis, like Stacey Abrams, who devote their entire lives to this and, and try to show us, the American people, what's at stake, and, and we're not paying attention. Again, it reminds me, in, in, in a way, of the scientists who have been trying for decades to explain to us about global warming and the seriousness of it and the consequences of it and, and the fact that it is happening now. Democracy is dying. Global warming is thriving and neither of those two outcomes, the death of democracy or, or the success of global warming, are outcomes that we want. And yet, they continue. How does that happen? Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcasts. 
As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.